Namo Bhutai, Namo Bhutai. This is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I'm sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 73, uh, which is the longer discourse with Vachagota. So, as we have uh, checked already, uh, MN 71 and MN 72 and MN 73. These are the three uh, a trilogy of uh, uh, discourses where uh, Vachagota in the first discourse asked certain metaphysical questions. Then in the second discourse, his understanding became improved. So he asked more refined questions. And in the third discourse, he is asking about what is skillful and what is not skillful. So I am sharing my learning summary from this discourse. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. I request you to go through the discourse and get you will get your own insights and do please share it in the comment section also. So let us start. So in this discourse, uh, Vachagota went up to the Buddha and asked, uh, uh, please teach me in brief what is skillful and what is unskillful, right? So his question was this. So Buddha said, Vacha, I can tell you what is skillful and what is unskillful in brief or in detail. That means I can tell you it in brief also. I can tell you it in detail also. Let me do so in brief. Listen and apply your mind. So, Vacha said, yes, sir. Buddha said, greed is unskillful. Contentment is skillful. Right? So, friends, this is very, very important to grasp these Buddha's words uh, uh, with... with uh, and reflect on these words. It's just not that you are, you know, we just go reading. It's not a, like a novel, right? So when we reflect on this, greed is unskillful, right? Con contentment is skillful. So anything that is unskillful leads us to suffering. Anything that is skillful leads us to peace, right? So we need to understand when we read something, what what is our experience with respect to what is written, right? Your experience will be dif different. For, for, for you, it will be food cravings which will be uh, more uh, kind of uh, relatable. Someone else, it may be lust that is more relatable, right? So, reflect with respect to your life. Greed is unskillful. Greed, any times, like greed for sense pleasures, right? In any way, for power, for money, for relationships, you know, uh, pleasant experiences. Greed is unskillful. Contentment is skillful. Contentment, being content with whatever you have is, Buddha says, is skillful. So we have to learn and move ourselves. We've been like idiots, right? All these lives, we've accumulated suffering because we've been unskillful. Now, we have to move from being unskillful now to being skillful. That's how we will be able to clear our suffering. Buddha said very clearly that I can only show you the way. I will not walk the way for you. You will only have to walk. The Buddhas only show the way. This is also there in the Dhammapada. Right? So, greed is unsuccessful. Contentment is skillful. Uh, greed is unskillful. Contentment is skillful. Hate is unskillful. Love is skillful. Hatred. Hate. This is like our default behavior. No? Ill will, hatred. That is unskillful behavior. Love is skillful. That it takes effort. This is like you are moving upstream. Right? Downstream, everyone can move. We have been moving downstream through so many years, through many lifetimes. Now is the time to exert the right effort and move upstream. So, love is skillful. Delusion is unskillful. Understanding is skillful. Understanding, right? Understanding people, understanding, you know, other person's needs, putting yourself in other person's shoes. That is skillful. So, these are these three unskillful things and Three skillful things. So Buddha has here explained it in kind of brief. So even other discourses, Buddha has said that greed, hatred and delusion, these are the root of all the unskillful qualities that we have, that manifest, that we manifest as anger and you no know, lust and blame and resentment and everything. There are basically three roots to it. Greed, hatred and delusion. Right? So the more we reflect on this, the more we are able to be mindful of our thoughts and actions right? and move towards the skillful. So first you have to be mindful that, okay, this is where I was going wrong and then you can move towards the skillful. right? Okay, so that's why mindfulness is very important. You can read all these things and not be mindful, then nothing will work. Right? Okay. Now Buddha is giving that a, a kind of a detailed explanation. Right? Okay. Now, now coming to the, he's now coming to the actions. Earlier para, it was more the uh, kind of qualities. Now it is the actions. Now, 
killing living creatures stealing sexual misconduct speech that is false divisive harsh nonsensical covetousness covetousness means uh, looking at someone's property with greed ill will and wrong view these things are unskillful again i'll repeat killing living creatures stealing sexual misconduct speech that is false divisive harsh nonsensical covetousness ill will and wrong view right these things are unskillful refraining from killing living creatures stealing sexual misconduct refraining from speech that is false divisive harsh nonsensical contentment kind heartedness and right view these things are skillful so there are these 10 unskillful things and 10 that are skillful this is what buddha explained then buddha says when a mendicant has given up craving so that it is cut off at the root made like a palm stump obliterated unable to rise in future the mendicant is perfected they have ended the defilements completed the spiritual journey done what has been done laid down the burden achieved their own true goal utterly ended the fetters of rebirth and are rightly freed through enlightenment now then buddha uh, then uh, vachaguta asks buddha that master gautama living aside you you are fully enlightened has ever a single monk disciple of master master gautama has realized has become enlightened his that was his question so uh, buddha said there are not just 100 such monks or 200 or 300 or 400 or 500 but many more than that right buddha said many many people have attained full enlightenment following these teachings then he said again same question he is saying for single nun disciple disciple same response single layman disciple who is white clothed and celibate who with the ending of the five five low, low fetters is reborn spontaneously without being extinguished not so question vashagota's question was so there are various stages of awakening like the first the kind of stream enterer then a once returner non returner at full is a like arhant like a full uh, liberation so he said a single layman disciple of master gautama who is white clothed and celibate now even at buddha's times there were lay disciples who lived in a mo- mostly followed all the monk precepts but they were in lay life so this so, so, so vacha gautama's question was did they become non returners so buddha said not just 100 2 or 3 or 4 or 500 but many more have achieved non returner right that means they do not need to return to this world so similarly he asked for ma- uh, nuns white clothed uh, uh, nuns that means a lay lay, lay women nuns right so similar response then then uh, then there was this thing then there was this thing that uh, is there any single layman disciple white cloth enjoying sensual pleasures following instructions so there is no celibacy here that is like layman who are not celibate who are following the five precepts who are enjoying the sensual pleasures who are following the instructions who have gone beyond doubt got rid of indecision and live self assured and independent of others regarding the teacher's instructions now these so buddha said yes there are not 100 not 200 not 300 many many more so these are the people who have achieved stream entry stream entry or sotapanna is people lay people like you and me who at this life living in lay life it is very it's near to impossible to attain full enlightenment but those people have at least reached stream entry stream entry is that you, they have entered the stream of enlightenment and from there there are maximum seven lives that buddha said and they are bound for awakening every life they take they are bound for awakening right and maximum seven lives so buddha said many many hundreds are there who have followed the instruction who have cut off these fetters of doubt indecision who lives lives self assured so as people as lay people our first target is that definitely uh, following the five precepts and becoming stream entry and as we progress in our life we can follow the additional precepts like 
being becoming celibate right or not eating after midday right so those precepts as we age and you know we become less attached less and less attached definitely we can do that and we can also aim for a non returner right in this life itself there is a book in this very life by saudhav pandit pandita i have to read this book uh, the, uh, it always attracts me so definitely let's make our best effort in this life itself right okay and then 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 vachakota said when vachakota knew that several 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 hundreds of people have achieved so he said that if master gautama was the only one to succeed in this teaching not any monks then this spiritual path would be incomplete but because both master gautama and monks have succeeded in this teaching this spiritual path is complete in that respect so it is like a proof of concept that we have right that if you, like for example if you are in a company and it's thinking of buying a new software or a new technology there is always a they ask for a proof of concept right whether this concept works similarly here vachagota got that that kind of a confidence that this teaching works this teaching not only freed gautama buddha but it also freed so so many other people and then he decided to take go for a refuge to master gautama for the teaching and the mendicant sangha may i receive the going for the ordination in the ascetic gautama's presence and when he said this and then there was this thing also he said about that you know as the ganga river slants slopes and inclines towards ocean and keeps pushing into the ocean in the same way master gautama's assembly with both lay people and renunciates slants slopes and inclines towards extinguishment and keeps pushing into extinguishment so what i just get it a point here i get it is that you know we have to just follow the teaching be in the teaching have a daily meditation practice listen to dhamma every day right listen to dhamma be meditative be mindful during the day that is like you know you are automatically you are pushed towards enlightenment you have to just not do anything too much different just follow the path what buddha has given no you have been given a clear path just follow it right and we are we will all be moved into enlightenment like what ganga ganga analogy that has been given so then he asked for refuge in buddha says that there is like he is coming from some other sect so buddha says there is a four month probation period and then definitely he can and then then he asked this question that i have reached as far as possible with this knowledge so he started practicing and he says please teach me further he said buddha said well then vachcha further develop two things serenity and discernment serenity calmness of mind what we can develop that how through concentration method through the method of samatha samatha meditation which is like just focusing on the breath in breath and out breath just focus on the in and out breath we can achieve a good deal of samatha and that samatha we can use uh, to practice vipassana vipassana is observing uh, the in this moment whatever is arising and falling to and what does vipassana do that vipassana gives us vipassana right that insight vipassana meaning is the right view that insight that everything is impermanent so buddha says when you have developed these two things they lead to the penetration of many elements then buddha said that when you develop you will also get many kinds of knowledges that means psychic power and then uh, hearing both kind of sounds human and divine understanding comprehending the minds of other beings and individuals individuals recollecting many kinds of past lives this all knowledges buddha himself got when he practiced right uh, then seeing uh, clear voice so purified that you can see sentient beings passing away and being reborn so buddha could in his mind see that a particular person when after his death where has he, has he got reborn so that knowledge then realizing the undefined freedom of heart so then towards the end of this discourse it is said that vachagota who living alone withdrawn diligent keen resolute soon realized the supreme end of the spiritual life and he lived having achieved it with his own insight and he became one of the perfect that he became one of the arahants fully perfected ones right with his own diligence right so i hope this uh, the, the discourse had some insights for you do reflect on this read this discourse at your end also and do share any insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya